Hello there. In the second part of warehouse operations basic, I would like to talk about the basics of the main warehouse operations. As you guys remember, remember in the first part, we actually talk about the types of warehouses and their importance. And we said that why we keep why we have warehouse in a supply chain network could be easily explained by why we have inventory, why we keep inventory, right? And after we're discussing the types of warehouse according to their ownership or according to the types of products we keep in warehouse, we also said that um, warehouse play a critical role in a supply chain network. I may have forgotten to say that even warehouses play more important role than before during this uh, pandemic uh, terms. When you guys go to a supermarket and see that the shelves are still full, this is a success of warehouse managers and truck drivers, or simply this is a success of all logistics workers. They have to be quicker than before. They have to be faster than before. So, I, I mean, I'm sure that some of the warehouses even work three shifts. They already hired more than thousands of workers to keep up with the demand. Demand is lumpy. After a two-day lockdown, two-day quarantine at the weekend, on Monday, when, we go to super, when you go to supermarket, you may have seen hun hundreds of people around there waiting in the queue to be able to get into supermarket and they, they they buy in large quantities than before right however we don't see the shelves are empty most of the time how do we do that warehouses are working harder than before truck drivers are working harder than before manufacturing plans to keep up with the demand work harder to keep up the demand so anyway so warehouse play a critical role in supply chain network okay and we even talk about the basics of the, the main warehouse operations, right? You, you, may, you, may, you, you guys may remember that. So we simply say that the operations starting from the arrival of a truck till, till, uh, till putting, putting away the goods to storage locations are called inbound operations, right? So these operations are called inbound operations. And then as, as soon as when we receive a customer order, it triggers the order picking operation and then outbound operations start and ends when we deliver the goods uh, with trucks. Okay, so these are the outbound operations. And now let's take a look at, at let's take a look at where the goods are typically stored in a warehouse according to their size. Okay, as soon as we receive goods, uh, if we are utilizing cross stacking operations, we can ship them. So this is what cross stacking operation, okay? Cross stacking operation. You guys remember that one of the missions of uh, having warehouses is to utilize cross stacking because, you know, warehouse managers, while warehouse managers uh, design their warehouses, they should focus on minimizing the number of touches because number of touches determine the number of handlings, which affects labor cost uh, and operation cost, okay? So as you guys remember, when we talk about, uh, when uh, in the layout, in the facility layout lecture, I told you that uh, our ultimate goal is to provide a smooth flow of goods, right? So this could be a sheet by minimizing number of touch. Of course, there are some also other criteria we need to take a look, but one of the goal is to have minimum number of touches. So cross stacking gives it, okay? So as soon as, if we, if we as soon as, um, when we receive goods, if we ship them immediately, this is called cross stacking. But most of the time, I mean, it's difficult to achieve that, okay? So therefore, we need some areas to put goods away. Reserve storage area is the area where we put goods in box, okay? Like in pallet loads, as you see in this picture, okay? So this is, 
this part is a reserve storage area, okay? And when we receive orders in pallets, this is the area we visit to pick the pallets out, okay? And if, you're, if you also accept orders in smaller units, such as in cases or in pieces, then, then those, some of those pallets, one or two pallets, sometimes three pallets, might be sent to another area. It's called case picking area, where we pick cases, okay? Broken pallets, where we store pallets, but then we pick from broken pallets, like in this example. After we put one of these pallet loads into the storage area, then our workers go to that storage area to pick these little boxes, okay? These boxes, these cases. Keep in mind that if you are gonna pick a pallet for your order, then you should definitely visit reserve area, okay? For pallet orders or orders in pallets, okay? But if you have orders that require three cases, five boxes, then we should visit this area, case picking area. It's also, it's also called forward picking area, okay? forward picking area, okay, where we pick cases. And in some warehouses, reserve storage area and forward picking area are separated from each other. But in many of the warehouses I have ever seen, okay, the racks, the, the, the single, um, single deep racks or selective racks uh, are divided into two parts, let me say, okay? So the bottom level of the rack area, the bottom level of the rack area, which has the ease, which, has, which is very convenient to access them, okay? Like, like it, in this example, okay? Is usually used as a forward picking area, and the upper rack locations, okay, the, the, the second or the third or the fourth rack, uh, racks are used as a reserve storage area. So in one example, in one design, reserve picking area and forward picking area are separated from each other, but in another design, the bottom levels are used as a forward picking area and the upper levels are used as a reserve storage area. And if you still need to pick in smaller units, like in broken case picking or piece picking area, then, then we pick cases to replenish those area, okay? So for picking area is replenished from reserve storage area or immediately from receiving area, okay? If we do not have enough stock or if, if, if yeah, if there is no pallet in the reserve storage area, then we can immediately replenish, restock for picking area from receiving or reserve storage area. And piece picking area is replenished from for picking area, okay? So after we pick the required items from the, from appropriate areas, then we bring them to an area where we sort and consolidate and pack them. After we do that, we make the order ready for shipping. And as soon as the truck arrives to the shipping dock, we load it and ship it away. Okay. So this is a typical warehouse you can easily see in retail industry or in distribution center. Now let's let's talk about the details of main warehouse operations, okay? As I said before, the first main warehouse operation is receiving, which is triggered by the arrival of truck or arrival of the notification or not triggered by the notification of arriving arrival of truck, okay? So this, this, this is a critical operation we should manage uh, efficiently, okay? Um, there are several decisions we need to deal with. The first one is uh, if we know when this truck is going to arrive, we can schedule it. Um, and then we can determine the deck, dock, 
okay, we can, we can determine which duct is going to be used. Selection of the duct might be critical because if we can unload those closer to where they are going to be put away, then we can reduce labor time or we can reduce travel distance, hence we can reduce labor cost, right? So we need to determine which duct is going to be used and according to the characteristics of the goods in the truck, are they in bulk or are they already, were they already palletized or um, we have dangerous goods or heavy, heavy goods or uh, light goods, okay? Then we can determine what type of material handling equipment is going to be used. Um, how many workers needed to unload that truck, okay? Um, are they going to be cross -tucked? Are they are they good enough for cross tacking? So considering all of these issues, um, we can determine our crew, uh, crew uh, with our workforce and uh, material handling equipment. Okay. As soon as we unload the truck, we put them in a staging area like in like this, and then we call our inspector. The inspector checks the product, checks the document. If everything is okay then they are, ready, re, they are ready to be put away, okay? Um, even we do sometimes, uh, I mean, actually most of the time we do labeling, okay? Uh, in order to uh, track our goods throughout uh, the warehouse, okay? Because supplier uh, labels uh, are not, are not, may not be good enough uh, for our, tracking, monitoring, or identification purposes. So we may want to use our, our own uh, barcoding or um, identification devices, okay? Um, yeah, sometimes uh, we receive goods like in bulk, then we, if we are going to put them away in pallets, then we need to palletize them. And if we receive them in pallets, and if the height of the pallets are not compatible with, our, with the height of our rigs, then we may need to depalletize them. And then we palletize them again, okay? So there are, there are different types of tasks uh, going on in, in, in the receiving operation, okay? So after we handle all these tests, uh, by the way, for some warehouses, that the stock cycle time is one of the critical performance measures for warehouses because they want their goods be available in their warehouse management system so that their customers can go ahead and see how many inventory, how many units of SKUA is available and then give an order. If the doctor stock cycle time increases, then we may lose some customers, therefore, this, is, this operation might be very critical for some, uh, for some companies. Okay? And according to some literature, receiving operation usually takes 10% of the operation cost in a warehouse. The second critical operation is put away operation. When the goods are ready for uh, put them away, for put away to storage location, we need to determine where they are going to be put away. So we call this slotting, okay? Or determining the appropriate location, product allocation. Okay? Slotting is a critical decision. Um, you may consider fast movers uh, are going to be located closer to the dock, slow movers are going to be located to the uh, further locations to the dock, okay? You may do this kind of slotting. Um, even you can utilize ABC analyze to determine which goods are fast movers, which goods are uh, slow movers, or so on. Or you can use uh, you can utilize some optimization tools to determine where they are where, where they are going to be located. Okay, so if you are using floor storage, then which lane is going to be used for which SKU? Of course, the amount of number of pallets you receive will. Uh, will be a useful data to determine which lane is okay for your um, put away. Or again, according to the weight of goods, um, or if there are some constraints such that this good 
cannot be located near to another, this type of good, then you should definitely consider this kind of constraint. Um, you may have already zoned your warehouse according to the type of goods, okay? So anyway, uh, you need to determine where it is going to be located. Or some warehouses, as far as I've seen that, some warehouses uh, don't use any kind, I mean, I don't wanna say don't use any kind of method, but they use some method, but the method is very simple. They let their forklift drivers to determine uh, the location. Okay, so it's sometimes called uh, closest to open uh, location or randomized storage. Okay, so what anyway, we should keep in that in, keep in mind that put away operation is critical because where you put your goods away actually determine where they are going to be picked. So if you come up with the wrong slotting, then your workers will have to travel long. When the travel time increases, put away and picking time will increase. Hence, the labor cost will increase, responsiveness will decrease. So that's why this is also a critical operation, which also takes 15% of the total operation cost according to some References. Another issue deal the, uh, regarding to put away is space utilization. If you can, if you can, if you if, if you don't use your space efficiently, then then you may have to ha have extra spaces, or you may have to rent additional spaces from third-party warehouses, and then your logistics cost will increase. Okay. Um, there are also uh, different types of material handling equipment used in storage area to fasten your put away operation like ASRS, but these equipment will be discussed in our next lectures. Okay. And another important issue in put away operation is this. We have to know where we put our goods. How we are gonna do it? know that? So you, most of, in most warehouses, okay, as far as I've seen, all of the warehouses I have ever seen have an addressing system. Each location in a storage location, both in floor storage or in a wrecking area, okay, are addressed. They each location have a unique address, and as long as we match the SKU or the pallet and the location. And if, if we keep its record, and if we do not forget to update that record, then we can know we can know where that product is stored. Okay, so whenever we need, we can easily take a look at our nodes or use our warehouse management system to see where it is located. Okay, so that's why we need to add and update information database. Okay. So receiving and put away operations are inbound operations and goods stay in the warehouse in, 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 its, in its storage location until we receive a customer order. As soon as we receive a customer orders, we receive a customer order, then we generate internal, we process them and we generate an internal order for a single customer or for multiple customers. Okay? In this order, we say that hey, uh, that SKU should that SKU should be picked from this location in these units for these customer orders, and these customer orders belong to this one. So, as we see in this example, different uh, or multiple customer orders are batched. Okay. But in some warehouses, they do not batching. They let one customer order be picked by one picker, okay? These are the things we will be discussing in our next lectures. So anyway, and in, when we uh, generate our internal picking order, which we call it pick list, okay? Our workers, or even in some warehouses, automated um, vehicles, 
help us to pick the required items. So suppose that we are talking about a manual or labor intensive warehouse. As soon as a worker receives a pick list, he takes a look at the locations, the order of the locations, okay? And then visit those locations to pick the required items. And sometimes a pick list might be given as in a barcode, okay? And the sequence of these barcodes also show the sequence of the locations need to be visited. Um, even we utilize some technologies such as pick to live and voice picking systems. In voice picking systems, uh, workers are directed by a voice messages. So when they listen to the voices, they know where they are going to visit and how many units of SKUs they will pick from that location. In the pick to light system, uh, this is very commonly used in pick pass systems, okay, for piece picking. Uh, they follow the lights and then they pick the required items and the number of units they need to be picked is shown in a in the screen okay as soon as they pick the required amount of items and put it in a basket they turn the light off and keep picking keep going on the picking operation okay I, I, i'm pretty sure that i'll be talking about their uh, the, these technologies in my uh, next lectures or as we said before in the, in the first part of this lecture order picking operation is very critical because they affect customer satisfaction and it also accounts according to some references it account 55 percent of the operating expense because because of uh it's labor intensive okay um in order to reduce, the, I mean, because it has the highest portion of cost, uh, the efficiency of order picking operation is very critical. We may utilize some technologies or we may use optimization tools. We may uh, utilize warehouse management system and so on. But the ultimate goal will be to reduce travel distance or, or picking time okay, in, in these warehouses. How we can reduce picking time, order picking time? When we break down the order picking, we see that 55% of the order picking cost is caused by travel. Travel, okay? Only 15% is searching. Searching is where that item is located. If your if your uh, database, uh, I mean, if you have if the data you get from your database is wrong, okay, then the, the, the location you get for that SQ may, may, may be wrong, okay, then you may start to search for it, okay. Even if it is right, okay, your workers spend some time for searching that location if it is not, if he is not familiar with this storage area, okay. And extracting means getting goods from the storage location out and put into the basket or pallet. Okay, extracting the goods from the storage location. And paperwork or identif for identification, we spend 20% of our time, okay? As soon as we receive the item, we update the information for the storage location, and we also confirm that this item is picked, okay? We may use some mobile terminals or hand terminals or we can even use pencil to keep note, okay? I know it's an old, very old fashion, but as far as I see, some warehouses still use this kind of paperwork. But pay attention, 55% of operating cost is caused by traveling, okay? So we need to use, we need to reduce traveling. This is critical. And there are some ways, okay, uh, to, to reduce that. Um, let me talk about very important, uh, two, two important um, definitions, two important terms, and then I am going to discuss how we can reduce travel time uh, using one of these, okay? But there are two important terms, especially uh, in order picking operations, especially in um, forward picking and piece picking area, okay? 
the first term we need to know is peak phase. We need to understand what it is. Peak phase is typically a two-dimensional space, surface, surface, okay, from, from or surface that we can directly access. Like in this example, this is the two-dimensional space, okay? When the work when the worker stands in front of a bin area, bin shelf area, or a storage area, okay, where he sees is the pig face, two-dimensional area, okay, two-dimensional surface. Because from that surface he's gonna do pig. Okay. So it is this one is the critical uh, measure. We need to know how it is calculated. SKU density. SKU density is the number of SKUs that could be reachable from a peak phase per unit area. Okay, we said that peak phase is a two-dimensional area. Okay, how many how many SKUs you can reach? So the formula for SKU density is number of SKUs divided by unit floor footage. If it is a floor stacking, floor storage, if there is no rack, if there is no bean shelf, okay, if we only put pallets on top of each other, okay, and back to back each other in a floor storage area, then we may consider the length of aisle. And in this length of aisle, in this, in this corridor, how many SKUs we can reach? So SKU density could be calculated like this for floor storage area. Or we may consider the total floor footage in the, in, in the floor storage area, suppose that 1,000 square of meter. How many SKUs are located in this floor footage, in this 1,000 square meter, 50 SKUs? Then when we divide that, this could, be, this could also give SKU density in that floor storage area. If we are talking about wrecking or bin shelling systems, then, then the peak phase is the front of the wrecking, okay, because there are multiple levels, right? So how many SKUs you can reach from a peak phase? Suppose that the, 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 that bin shelf area has a six square meter, okay, and there are 360 SKUs, so the SKU density will be 60, okay? So it means that 60 SKUs could be reachable from one square of meter area, okay? So, as you can easily guess that, the higher the SKU density, the higher the potential for shorter travel, right? Shorter travel in order picking, why? Because you don't need to move between locations. Just by standing on specific coin, okay? You can reach 60, 100 different SKUs. So why you need to move them? Why you need to travel them? If you can reach all of the required SKUs from standing on a single point, right? But if you distribute your SKUs all around the bean shelving, then you will have, you will definitely have to travel between those SKUs, right? Then results in lower SKU density. When the SKU density increases, peak density also increases. Okay, so what is peak density? SKU density is the number of SKUs in a peak phase, and peak density is the number of peaks, number of peaks achieved per unit area or on the peak phase or achieved in a peak phase, okay? If it is floor storage area, achieved in a unit distance. So this is the formula for peak density. Let me just give a simple example. In a peaking zone that's a, that is 50 meters long, okay? A picker on an average peaks is 100 SKUs in each sweep, each sweep okay? The average peak density is two SKUs per meter traveled. Is it, is it higher the better? Yeah, it is higher the better. Because if we can 
if we can increase peak density, then it results in lower travel distances. Then, then faster picking. Then lower order picking cost. Okay. Then so how we can achieve higher peak density? There are several simple ways to achieve that. One of them is storing popular items together. So storing popular items together may increase, storing popular items together in a local area, in a zone, may increase peak density because, because if these items are frequently ordered, and if they are ordered together, then without walking in, 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 in between different locations, you can pick them in very close locations so you can reduce travel distance. And as we said before, if we can increase SKU density, we can also increase peak density. There is another way which is more complex than, the, uh, than, than, the, than the before, okay? It is this, if we can batch orders, if we can batch orders, we can also increase peak density. What is batching order? I told you that. Um, a worker can pick SKUs for single customer, right? So he, is, he walks all around the warehouse to pick orders only for customer. However, while he is traveling, Okay, he, he can also pick SKUs for different customers because eventually he passes through those locations. Why he shouldn't pick SKUs for some other customers, right? If we, if we can do this operation efficiently, so you can assign multiple customer orders to a single worker, which is called batching, and then when he travels the same amount of distance, he can pick more units. So batching order can also increase peak density. However, batching comes with different issues, such as how we are gonna sort SKUs, how we are gonna sort them, because the worker picks SKUs for different orders. Is he going to know which one belongs to which customer? Is he going to sort them while picking? If he does, it increases picking time, right? Sorting what we call sorting while pick needs some time. It may increase picking time for that, for that worker, right? If we do not allow worker to sort them while picking, then we should definitely sort them at the downstream station. Then we will have to hire additional worker to sort them, or we need to utilize sorting, sorting, sortation equipment, sortation machine, right? It needs capital investment or it, it increases labor cost. Or another issue where you, we, we commonly see in warehouse that while a worker uh, sort, I mean, sorting while picking may also cause errors. Workers may accidentally put the wrong SKUs into wrong basket, okay? Then, then this may cause, this may cause um, um, errors in order picking hands when if we ship uh, his orders with missing items or with wrong items, then we may even face with low customer satisfaction uh, due to, and also we may face with uh, high logistics cost due to returning goods. Okay. In order to avoid having this kind of error, another worker before shipping or before packing, another worker might work for taking it all which also cause which also cause additional labor cost okay so anyway 
Um, the main trade-off between batching or not batching uh, is could be could be seen like this. One might increase picking time or cost. The other one uh, might increase walking time when they pick single orders, okay? So the trade-off between increasing walking time or increasing picking time, okay? That's why batching or not batching should be careful, carefully uh, analyzed. That's why we always say that warehousing is a, is a science. There are many scientific tools uh, that could be used to efficiently design your warehouses, to efficiently manage your warehouse operations. Anyway, um, as soon as we pick the required items, if they need to be sorted, either a worker or there are some sorting machines can be used to sort the goods. Sorting means uh, determining which SKU, which box, which case is going to be sent to which location or which customer. This kind of sortation machine is very commonly used in e-fulfillment uh, centers, uh, parcel delivery companies, okay? So in parcel delivery companies, they, they usually sort cases according to destination or according to the trucks, okay? They usually cause large uh, capital, cause large capital expense, uh, especially in parcel delivery companies, okay? After we sort them, we check the goods, and if everything is okay, we pack them and make them ready for shipping. And for a shipping operation, we determine which truck is going to be sent, and then we assign a dock for that truck, then using some special material handling equipment, such as this kind of telescopic conveyor system, okay, we go ahead and load our truck. And during this time, we also prepare the required documents, such as bill of lading, okay, or any kind of special documents. After we prepare them and load the truck, then we ship them away. Okay, sometimes we ship trucks with truck load, or sometimes we may use parcel delivery companies such as uh, UPS, FedEx, Aras in Turkey, MNG in Turkey, Yurtici, PTT, some, some companies to ship less than truck load or uh, parcel delivery. Okay, and the shipping cost, this operation cost usually takes 15% of the operating cost in warehouse. Okay, uh, this is the end of part two. In, 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 in the second part, I actually introduced the basics of main warehouse operations. Um, I'm pretty sure that you get uh, the basics of them. You understood what is going on in those operations, what type of de decisions uh, a, a warehouse manager uh, usually faced with, okay? Uh, yeah, that's what it is, okay? Anyway, um, have a nice day, take care. Um, hope to see you in my next lecture, bye.